still from Joshua. But then um, the book of Joshua, and as I worked a little bit through Joshua 4 to 10, that is actually for this season, this week, the day where I thought maybe we must have mercy on you and don't do a two-hour sermon. Amen. May the Lord help us. But I want to read with you. Please, Joshua 4. Tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you, and put them down as a, at a place where you stay tonight. And then further also, talking about these stones, that it must be a memorial. Is that one? Is that the right word? Verse 18. No sooner had they set their feet on the dry ground than the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at flood stage as before. God had a major miracle. Remember, when, just when they entered the Jordan, just as soon as they touched the river, it opened up. But they had to walk into that place. Not first of all. There's a stone for each one. Please take a stone. You know, not to throw one another, please, but it's a stone. We bought them for a thousand rand each. You can sell it on the green market. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, what are we saying? While they were still in the Jordan, God said, pick up the stones there where the priests are standing. In your breakthrough, in your breakthrough, prepare for the testimony of your miracle. Let's go with the first one, Joshua 4. Plan your testimony. You can write there, please, please. Write this and go and work it through. Christelle Scrafford Moynier, I say. Plan your testimony. Before they had the testimony, before they could stand on the other side of the Jordan, everybody went through and the Jordan closed up. And there they can have a testimony. No, before the time, even while going through, while the ark still in the middle of the Jordan, pick up the stones. Because it must become a testimony. My brother, my sister, plan ahead how you will give God the glory. Plan ahead how you will and gonna give God the glory. Doesn't matter the fullness of the outcome. You're gonna give God the honor and the glory. Amen? But plan ahead. Plan ahead. Plan your testimony. Great. Number two. Plan your victory over Goliath. And when I started there i just felt no let's just go with with this concept of the stones plan your victory over goliath mr david he went and get he got his five stones pebbles is that the right other word because he planned the victory ahead of time because he had a testimony already through how he walked with God and how he got victory and how he got breakthroughs before. And in the light of the testimony of what happened in the past, he just went and he picked up some stones because he knew what's going to happen. He told the king, uh, King, don't worry. This, with this man, with this Goliath, with this giant, it's going to go the same as with me and my God in the past. What happened in the past? No, it's going to be the same like with the lion and the bear. When they wanted to slay some sheep, I loved the sheep so much that I gave my, was willing to give my life for the stupid sheep. No, 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 no. I knew my God. And I wanted to be, to be faithful to my father. He said, you watch the sheep. And even if it will cost me my life, I will be faithful. And I will watch the sheep. But based on remembering the testimonies of God, remembering the testimonies of God, he just stood before the giant and it was no problem. It wasn't the stress factor. It wasn't the intimidation for him. Because he could remember the testimonies of the past. 
when Israel forgot the testimonies of the past of what God has done, they got intimidated by the giants just before crossing the Jordan the first time. Because they were intimidated, because they forgot the miracles of God. They could remember all the moaning and the groaning about all the stuff. Hello? That happened. And you can so preciously put those stones in your heart. And keep those stones. But please, keep in your hand. Pick up in your hand. Your preparation for a testimony. How you're not just walking for a for a future, for a Canaan, for that what God has for you. Not for just for inheriting the promises, but plan how you're going to give him the glory when you are there. Plan how he will have alone all the glory, all the honor when you are there. And how you will make sure that you will remember what God has done. Because they had to take the stones from the Jordan and make... That altar made that heap of stones. And when the children, as the word says, when the children would ask you, what, oh, what is that, those stones laying there? Then you will say, it's not, well, how does that song go? Stones, 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 fire stones. You know that Christian song? Nobody. Long before your time. Oh, Zeti at least remember that song. Okay, what are we talking about? No, no not about that one. <laughs> and then tell your children, this is because of what God has done. Those stones was for the next generation to remember the miracles of God. You need to teach your children the miracles of God. Now you remember, you had, you, I gave you that sweet that you didn't eat. You're going to keep it for your children and their children and because you're going to say, no, grandma and grandpa made their decision that they will not use the name of the Lord just as a wrapping of a sweet to get to the sweet. No, 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 no. You're not going to use that just as a wrapping like all promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Hello? Now this uh, little stone you're also going to keep for the generations. Amen. That was when, my, when grandpa and grandma made the decision that they will be always preparing themselves for the next testimony. For the next testimony of how to give God the glory for what he is doing and what he has done. Amen. Let that message stay with them in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Plan your victory over Goliath, my brother, my sister. And decide that you will not be intimidated. You will not be intimidated. Because you know your God. Not because you know the stone, but it represents something. Are you with me? For you to remember. Number three. Plan your change of heart. Heart of stone. Or heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. And then also in, in Jeremiah. Then also in Hebrew. About the new covenant. This is what God will do. He will take out the heart of stone. And give you a heart of flesh. My brother my sister. The problem is not. Is not the pebble in your shoe. That you feel. That guy is the irritation. He's like a pebble in your shoe. No. The pebble in the shoe is only because. There's something in the heart that is wrong. That I need to take out. This heart of stone. You cannot just close your heart towards someone. You better love them. You better be excited about God's destiny for them. Hello? Are you with me? But with that, allow God to take out the heart of stone. To give you a heart of flesh. To give you his heart for people. You cannot close down towards people because... And say, no, but I'm more introvert. And this is not my personality. Your personality cannot be a curse to stand between you and people. God wants to be involved with people. So the one living inside of you, you need to have his heart and honor his heart and live his heart and express his heart. And he has a heart of flesh, not a heart of stone. Religion will give you a heart of stone. All the right and the wrongs. But that's not what God has for you. Are you with me? Amen. Number four. Plan your forgiveness towards others. Throw down those stones. You don't need that type of stone. You don't need that type of stone. Are you with me? 
Are you with me? Religion will bring you into the place of, no, we need to, we need to kill this, this lady. We're caught in the act of adultery. And who had the stone to be thrown? The Pharisees, the religious system. Religion in you will throw stones at others, but also throw stones at that what is beautiful in your own life. When you start to open up with God, when you start to be becoming more vulnerable in Him, that you can kill that vulnerability, that part in you that is opening up to God. You can kill that with what? Self-condemnation. But that self-condemnation, that's a religious thing. Don't throw yourself with the stones. That's freaky. With the stones of religion. But I'm not religious. You are religious when you're not walking in the relationship. The, the moment that you are reading this word and getting into prayer, getting into faith, getting into the, uh, the, the thoughts of God, but you don't do it out of relationship, you are in religion. And with religion, you will pick up stones that we will throw at yourself, at your destiny, at other people. That's what you do. That's what I do when I don't choose the relationship. May God help you. May God help me. That through the Holy Spirit, we will interpret the word, interpret everything through our relationship with God. Amen. Because only in that there is eternal life. To know the Father and His Son. Great plan how to forgive. I know my husband's going to do that. So I choose to forgive him. No, that's judgment. Don't, don't go that way. But make sure that in your heart you have such gratitude towards God. Knowing that through the cross, who you are is only grace. So that you have planned not the vision of all the things you need to do this week. But how will I give him honor? How will I be thankful? How will I have a testimony this week? Hello? How will I be prepared to forgive? Sometimes God even want to warn you. When I had to work off a medical bursary in, in Pretoria for a year and a half, and God said to me, it's time to go second year Bible school, come full time. And I said, God, how will my time be here? And one of the, I don't know how many verses, I went for a week with God, and um, was that somebody will stab me in the back. And it was not how to beware of that, but my, God's question to me was, what are you going to do when they stab you in the back? How will you forgive? How will you give me glory? How will you still walk in my grace? Sure. It was not so lacquer, but it happened. When I came for the second year, we organized already a, a, a worship outreach time at the army camp, and where there were like 3,000 new guys came in, we came in, and we we're going to do the stuff. And then suddenly, the whole, all the Bible school students, they didn't want to come anymore. I thought, what, what now? And I came with my sound system, and... Uh, that we had did a lot of outreaches in the townships and different places there in Pretoria. And uh, it was me and a lady that did the sound. But she had different motives at that stage. But she, she, she came with and she did the sound. And it was me and 3,000 guys. Hmm. That was interesting. But to go up, up there, God had to prepare my heart that that day I will not stand there with an offense are you with me I had to do a drama on my own a drama that five people will normally do and do this and do that and testify and whoa hallelujah and the guys I would tell them let's stand and let we're gonna honor God and we sang this song blah, 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 and some this and some that I say if you don't have respect for God please sit down if you have the guts to have respect for God, then sing from your heart. And we sang that song, um, Then Sing My Soul. I will never forget that moment when those 3,000, they just lift the roof and full out just sang for God. 
But God had to make sure that I, my heart will be sorted before the time. Sometimes you need to plan your forgiveness. Because of what God wants to do. And if you in that moment on Tuesday not going to forgive. You're going to miss your destiny. For what God has for you for the day. And you're going to mess up. With wrong choices. May God help us. Amen. Throw down those stones. Number five. Plan your worship, acknowledgement, dependence on God. You know, when Noah got out of the ark, he built an altar for the Lord and he gave him honor. So many times the people, when they went into the next phase, first of all, before they walked into their breakthrough, before they walked into their Canaan, they built an altar and gave God the glory. Make sure, make sure that you always first give him the glory. Is it not Philippians 4, verse 6, talking about be anxious of nothing. God is just commanding you. How can you just obey? If you feel anxious, God just say, stop being anxious. To obey God, I must just stop being anxious. But what do I do with this? Well, in that scripture, that verse, it says, be anxious of nothing but. Bring all your everything in prayer and supplication. Supplication is not in suffering. It's in with the intense prayer. Bring everything before God in prayer, intensity, and with thanksgiving. And then, and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. The authority of peace. There will be an authority of peace above the authority of anxiety. But anxiety, stress, and fears must have the authority in your life. If you don't know how to bring everything before God in prayer with a focus and with thanksgiving. And with that thanksgiving, you walk over the bridge into a place where the fear is replaced with peace. And it, it, you don't even understand how. Peace can so rule in the midst of what you feel, in the midst of what you think, in the midst of your thought patterns and your challenges. There is just this peace that surpasses all understanding that is protecting your heart, protecting your mind. Because your heart needs to be protected more than anything else on this earth, the word says. But that for that you need God. You need God. So protect is not just, I protect my heart. <laughs> there's some practical things that you need to do and one of those is, will be prayer intensity thanksgiving from the authority of anxiety to the authority of the peace of God over your life let it be so in Jesus name but bring when you have your breakthrough don't be excited I'm, I'm running in the vision because God gave me the breakthrough before you go with a vision, come with a worship. Let's say, before my successful vision, I will have worship. So on the other side, Joshua built an altar. On the other side, Noah built an altar. When they were the produce of the land, Abel, Cain, they built the altar to give thanks unto the Lord. Let there always be the altar of honor and praise unto your God. Use the stones in your life. Pick up the stones, not to throw one another, but to build an altar of thanksgiving, altar of worship. Amen. Next one, number six. Looks to the rock from which you were cut. Okay, Isaiah 51 verse 1. What are we talking about he is the rock, Jesus Christ. He is the rock. We see with the visions that Daniel saw. We see when God says, build your house on the rock. The rock is who? Jesus Christ. Not built on him as a person. Built on who? The revelation of who he is. On your relating with this awesome God, understand from where you come. But sometimes we can feel we are like this piece of stone like this little clippy and the circumstance can take you no 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 remember from where you came you were cut out by God hello no the quality that is in you because you come 
from the heart of heaven, Jesus Christ. You were cut from there, here, to represent the quality of who he is. Oh, you are cut from that rock, so you represent that type of rock. You represent that type of quality. Because from the rock of ages, you were cut from there. You're a piece of quality coming from the quality of heaven, Jesus Christ. Amen. You take that, please, my brother. Let's go with that. Sister, Dazi. Number seven. Plan to open up the fountains. The wells. The wells. Genesis 29, that was Jacob. We see the revelation of worship in John 4 at the well of Jacob. When Jesus spoke to the Samaritan woman, and he says, those who will drink from me, they will never thirst again. No, 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 how will that be? It's only because the water will become, will become a well, will become a fountain. When God gives you the living water, God giving you the, the way how to pray. God giving you the ability to relate to him. God give you the ability to understand his grace and to receive it. God give you the ability to receive his forgiveness and to give his forgiveness. God give you that ability. And in that, God you give you his living word. He's giving you the living water. But if you do nothing with it, it will never become a well. It will never become a fountain from within you. But John 4 says, the water in you will become a fountain. In how? When you worship me in spirit and truth. It's connected everything with that revelation. When you understand how to worship God. And in your prayer, how to relate to him. How to wow about him. How to focus on him in spite of. How to honor him in the spite of other things that can be honored. And how do you honor other things? I honor my circumstance. You never say that. By focusing on the circumstance more than on God. That is, I worship that more than that. And in that way you will know. If he is the focus and the center point. But the more you understand even how to pray in tongues. When you pray in tongues, your mind is unfruitful. Hey? But when you worship from your spirit and from truth. He says God is looking, he's seeking People who will worship him in spirit and truth. And in spirit is not in the Holy Spirit. In spirit and truth is from the, your spirit and from the truth in you. They must come worship. But everything under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So it's not worship in the Holy Spirit and truth. Because this truth must be also under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But from my spirit... And from the truth that is alive in me, all under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Those worshippers, God, He's looking for them. Because His Spirit and your Spirit connect for intimacy. And Holy Spirit will testify in your Spirit about the truth. And in that connection and in that relationship, the water that He has given you will become a fountain, that there's this dynamo in you, there's this love that you are driven by this love. His word is alive in you. Okay, the water must become a well. Amen. Because when the water becomes a well, people can drink from the fountain in you. People can drink. But if you don't allow the water to become a well, then suddenly in your relationship you are just dry. You must give to people and then now you are dry. You are Finish. And how you had to give to people. What's the problem? Not that people is just taking everything from your life. No, 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 no. The problem is somewhere the water that he gave me didn't become a well. It was just, just, it's just this freshness coming from my spirit. Because God is not tired in my spirit. Never. But if your connection with God in your spirit is alive. Then it becomes a well. Open it up. But then the enemy, the Philistines and the Hittites and, and all those Amalekites, all those guys came and they threw stones in the wells of the Israelites. So that anger, that bitterness, that irritation, that negativity, bring those demons they throw 
those stones in your well so that you feel you suffocate. But you, then you need to take out those stuff that those Philistines, those Philistines, the fear, the anxiety, the death. A fountain of living water in you, my brother, my sister. Okay, at least we have a stone. Plan to open up the fountains, the wells in your life. Don't let the enemy put all those stuff in and you try to be fresh and you pray and you worship and you fast even and you do all this stuff and it does not work because there's some stones in the well. In your soul, there's some stones that is on top of the well that is in your spirit. Nothing wrong with the well. The well will not dry up. God will not dry up with all respect. But in your soul, this negativity or intimidation or whatever, or performance, get those stuff dealt with. Amen? So that the beauty of the freshness coming from that fountain that is from God will come forth from your spirit. Amen. We need some freshness in our lives, in Jesus' name. Number eight. Drink from the rock. Drink from the rock. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4. Talking about... Talking about all the Israelites, they were baptized in Moses, baptized in the Red Sea, baptized in the cloud. What is he talking about? Baptized in Moses is baptism in Jesus Christ. Amen? When you gave your life to Christ. Baptism through the Red Sea, that is your baptism in water as a testimony. Baptism in the cloud, that is baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen? And then afterward, he's talking about they drank from the living water from the rock. You remember that. And now that was the rock Jesus Christ. The spiritual rock that is Jesus Christ. The water from the rock that flew from the rock, that came from the rock was Jesus Christ as the rock. The first time Moses had to strike the rock because Jesus Christ, the rock, will be beaten. He will be on the cross. Hello, are you with me? They will strike the rock. As the Father ordained it to happen. And from you will flow that what you will bring life to you. The water and the blood will come forth. Through the blood of forgiveness you will drink from the water of life. Coming from Jesus Christ. The rock. And you will drink from him the spiritual rock. Second time in frustration. Moses also Instead of speaking, strike. Striking the rock. You cannot do that. Out of frustration. Once he was crucified. You need to have respect for the rock, Jesus Christ. Be careful what you do with the word. That you can strike with a religion. One another. Strike yourself. And then you will go to heaven. But you will not see Canaan. Are you with me? Now for Moses, he in any case knew God face to face. So that was life. Yes, he could see afar what the people going to inherit. Canaan, you remember? As he went on the mountain and then he went to God. And God said to Joshua, Moses is dead. But, my brother, my sister, may we not out of frustration with people, out of frustration with ourselves, Strike the rock and miss our destiny. Amen. Have respect for the rock, Jesus Christ. And let him give you the freshness that come from him. Amen. Number nine. Rock in front of lion's den. Jesus' grave. Fire of friends. Yeah, and Lazarus. The rock in front of the lion's den. When the enemy tried to put you in a situation and in circumstances. Remember uh, Daniel in the lion's den? Hello? And they put a rock at the entrance. The enemy can roll that rock in front there and you in your circumstances and they believe and, the, and hell believes that you will fear and you will be eaten alive through your circumstances and your weaknesses and the temptations and the things that come your way 
Ah, uh ah, -uh, in that place. This Daniel didn't fight how to get the rock away from the entrance. He looked at God. And there's one lion that will speak into your life. That's the lion of Judah. Amen. And he will close the mouths of the other lions. But you need to then honor the lion of Judah. Honor the lion of Judah. And you will not be intimidated by the other lions. Even if the stone is rolled in front of a place where you could have a freedom and you feel that everybody against you, you feel that the work is like people are against you and you're, there's a lot of frustrations and intimidations. You feel there's no way out. In that place, in that place, in that place, you will see those lions will have no authority. You don't give those lions a voice. You honor the line of Judah and you honor his voice. What will come from his mouth? Hello. Honor that. Honor that. Amen. The rock in front of the grave of Jesus. No. No human hands. And the one worry, the worry with the ladies, they said, who's going to roll away the rock? Who's going to roll that away? And many times we can have that expectation. Who's going to roll away so that we can get to Jesus? God will. Who said, He had a few clips away roll in the path of that person. How do you say that in English? Who will roll away the stones so that I can have a breakthrough? Oh, man, there's a breakthrough for you. The stone has been rolled away. For you to meet up with the resurrected Christ. Amen. But you will not find him in that place of death. Because there you will just come in. To see the testimony that he has risen. So you can enter that place. Where you thought. There will be death. And you come with performance to that. Where you think is death. No in that place find the testimony that he has risen. He is not in that place. He has conquered death. He has conquered the destruction. That can come into your life. The testimony of the death of Jesus is in the resurrection. And today, death will work for you. The death of your flesh, the death of your weakness, the death of that what is not from God. It will work for your benefit. Die is gain. Life is Christ. Die is gain. Die is profit in your life. Okay, the fire of the friends. You remember that one. There's the fire. The friends of Daniel. They were thrown in the, how do you say? Fiery furnace. Okay, that thing. They were thrown in there. But you know, they were not intimidated. Even before, yeah, it was closed. A lot of rubbish happened. Yeah. But what happened in there? A testimony. A testimony. A testimony. But you know the testimony be ha happened even before the time. Remember what the friends told the king? King, we will not bow before this rubbish. We will not bow. You will not bow before anxiety. You will not bow before fear. You will not bow before your own reasoning. You will not bow before your way of thinking. You will not bow before that. They said, we will not bow because our God is able to save us. And we want you to know, King, and even if our God will not save us, still we will not bow. That is a man with integrity. So they gave, that, that, was, that testimony was just before they went into the fire. That King, they will know, they were so faithful to their God. That they said, even if this God will not save them, they will still not bow before any other God. May that be our lives. Amen. That when the stone is rolled in, rolled in front, that when they opened that place, they look at you, they will see Jesus Christ in the midst of your fire. The fire that they thought they will set up for you. The fire that your flesh and the enemy would try to dump you into in that fire when you walk with christ it's a place of testimony 
when the world throw you in a fire, when your flesh throw you in a fire, when your fear would want to throw you in the fire, in that fire, Jesus wants to rock up. He wants to be there. And you will walk with a testimony in your fire. Amen. You with me? Lazarus, Lazarus. Okay. The stone in front of the grave, in the front of the tomb. And even the lady said, Martha and Mary, I mean, they said, Jesus, um, please don't go in. Let me just tell you, it's not going to work. It's like telling God, you cannot do this miracle. It's, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time because there's smell already. He's dead already more than three days. So there's a smell. So it's not worth it. But you will not never tell Jesus that. But in your mind, you will dismiss that prayer that you prayed. You will dismiss that faith and say, okay, maybe this is just God's will. I surrender. Be careful. There is a surrender in worship before the Lord. But sometimes this, you cannot quit on your faith in God. You cannot quit when trusting God for a certain miracle until the time God says, no, this is the way it's going to happen. Are you with me? So you take away that stone when he tells you to take it away, even though you think, if I'm going to take that away, it's, it's going to be bad. Hear God's voice and do according to his voice. Right, number 10. Plan foundation and walls of the temple in Jerusalem. With the stones, they had to cut the stones and they had to plan the foundation. Make sure the foundation of your life is accurate. Is accurate. The foundation for what? For the temple. Who are the, you and me, we are the temple. Temple for what? Foundation is ready for God to dwell in you. Foundation is ready, not for your opinion to dwell in you, not for the offense to dwell in you, not for the past hurts and past disappointments to dwell in you. And you can throw a foundation, you can give all the reasons why you believe what you believe. You can give all those reasons. No. Don't build a foundation with a lot of rabbis of reasoning. Build the foundation with the word of God, with the word of God. And Jerusalem, and even with the walls of the temple and the walls of Jerusalem. Let's go first to the walls of the temple. You need to build with the stones. You need to build where you understand this is from God on this side. That is not from God. There must be a clear wall built. But God is in here. God is not there. I don't say go and live in a monastery. That didn't, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, you must understand, this is God, this is not God. And build such a life that you understand the dividing wall of the temple. And on this side, there's no other chachas coming to live here. There's no demon of stress or frustration that's going to live in this temple. Because I know the dividing line. I've built accurately with the word of God a wall. That is the walls of the temple. But then also the walls of Jerusalem. Jerusalem means, from the Hebrew, it means the habitation of peace. That's where peace dwells, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray that Christ will manifest himself in Jerusalem. The Old Testament, talking about pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This is not just that, that these guys or, or the guys from Iran will not attack them or that. That's not political. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem in your life. For the habitation of peace. Hello? That you will allow the peace of God to dwell in you. New Jerusalem to be built in you. But you also to live in the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem, the city of God that will come down from heaven. God, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done. Because more and more we will see the new Jerusalem coming down. Because there's a supernatural peace among the church of Christ. There's a supernatural peace among the Christians in every nation. There's just the supernatural, the world will say magical, peace 
that in spite of whatever, they are not just content. They have this faith. They have this contentment. They have this presence in them and around them. That is the mature church of Christ that will rise up more and more and more in the future. Are you with me? But build. So many times the walls were torn down. And then Nehemiah and all those guys, they need to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Long ago, with an outreach in Jerusalem, we've walked, uh, did a prayer walk on the old wall of uh, Jerusalem. Oh, well, awesome experience. But all I'm saying, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, know the difference where the peace of God is and where it's not. In your life, you must know, that's a place where I'm not comfortable with. It's, it looks good. It looks good. It looks from God. It, it's the right idea. It's the right words. It's the right thing. But I don't have peace. And when you build that quality in your life, when it's, it sounds godly, it sounds exactly according to the word of God. But I don't have peace. That's when you rise up. Because you take the stones and you build accurately. A life where you will know this is from God, this is not from God. Habitation of peace, Jerusalem. Right, number 11. We have 15. Five to go. Up to here. Until, yeah, God led. Even I, yes, sir. Even I, yes, sir. It means up to here. God has led us. Tot hier toe het God gelei. What is it saying? Up to here, we understand what God has done. What God has done. He built an altar. Samuel built an altar once again. And I'm saying once again, make sure that the testimonies in your life is established. Testimonies must be established. Let's say, my testimonies must be established. And you better understand that it's not for you alone. You better remember the testimonies. You better write it down because it's for generations. How many times it was for the generations? God said, the moment when they went through the Jordan, God said, for now, for the generations to come. This testimony must be established. Those stones, you will pick up and you will put it there as a memorial. God is a generational God. God wants your children and grandchildren to know the testimonies that is from him. Are you with me? What happened when Joseph went to Egypt? Hello. God had major miracles. And through the wisdom coming from that man, God changed the whole economy of Egypt. So that, so that through the changed economy, there will be provision for his people. So that there will be provision for his people. And the people knew God and what happened. And then a new Pharaoh came in that didn't know what God has done. But that was not the problem, first of all, that brought the slavery of 400 years. You know what the problem was? They rose up a generation in Israel that didn't know the miracles of God, the word says. The problem was one generation didn't talk with excitement and honor to the next generation about the miracles of God. And when a, re a generation rose up that didn't know the miracles of God, more and more and more they became enslaved for 400 years. And then God raised the Moses. And they once again they saw the miracles and the miracles and the miracles of God. And they went through the desert but the people didn't remember the miracles. They just look at the circumstances. And when they came to the Jordan, God even numbered the times that they murmured against him. And they said, now ten times you've tested me. You've tempted me. You didn't have respect for me. How? By the murmuring. You know, the one time that he counted as one of the ten times of tempting, where at the tenth time, God said, now you did it for ten times, you will not enter the land. You will not enter the land. They couldn't see what God's going to do against the giants because they couldn't remember the testimonies. They couldn't remember the testimonies, set up the testimonies, so that when you face the giants of Canaan, 
there's no problem because you remember what he has done in your life. Are you with me? But at that place, one of the times that, that he counted as, as a place where they tempted him and where they murmured was when they asked for water. You could be thirsty and you can ask God for water. Like they asked Moses, that Moses will ask God for the water. So they came to the right source. But even in their prayer today, we can call it even today in my prayer, I can murmur and it can be counted against me for my destiny. God is not out to punish you. But you carve out your destiny, life, death and life in the power of the tongue. And how you will murmur and stand against. Because what? Why the murmuring? Because they couldn't remember the testimonies of God. You better put it on your lips. The testimonies of what God has done. Even if we must talk 7,000 times about what God has done. Even in the giving of this land. And how God in his grace can be there for us. Amen. May the Lord help you. Number 12. Rest on the rock staircase of angels. What happened there? It was Jacob. He was in that place. He took a rock and put his head on the rock. I don't know how he slept like that. How can your head rest on a rock? But that's what he did. I want to say let your head rest on Jesus Christ as the rock. Let your head, when you go to sleep, Laying tonight on your cushion, just say, God, my head will rest, my thoughts, my, my, my life will rest on the revelation of who you are. You are the rock. You are the rock. And when you put your thoughts and your life to rest on the rock, you will see the open heavens more in your life. You will see the open heavens more in your life when you find rest on the rock. Amen. You find rest on the rock, the solid rock, the unchangeable grace, the unchangeable love, the un unchangeable passion from God for your life. You find rest on that, you will understand the open heavens. Like he saw angels up and down from heaven. That's number 12. Number 13, the Ten Commandments. Genesis 24, 34, one time, second time around. What are we talking? The unchangeableness. Of his principles on the rock, imprinted by God Himself, not by Moses, imprinted by God Himself. But with the principles that you've been given from God, you can come down from the, the place where you had excellent time with God, and God gave you this, these principles. You had it. I don't know if some of you guys experienced it. I experienced it in my life. And I walk into the situation with the principles of God. Oh, I had this awesome time with God. And I've seen such, such a lot of stuff that is valuable, that is precious. And I come in a situation, and in that frustration, I will just forget about it. I will just throw it down and go with the preciousness of what I feel like saying or feel like doing. <clears throat> and I can throw it down. Praise God for his grace that I can go back into his presence. And he will revise me <laughs> the principles that he gave me. Those ten commandments. You're not under the law. You are in the law because you see the heart of God in the law. Amen. So don't throw away the principles because of your negativity or depression or whatever you're going through. Don't throw away the, throw down the principles. But let it, him write it on your heart. Amen. Number 14. The cornerstone. We're talking about the stones. For some, it will be a stumbling block. And my flesh will stumble. And maybe it's good that my flesh must stumble over the word. And say, God, let... Let my flesh stumble because let my flesh not take me into utter destruction. Let my flesh, my fears, and my whatever, don't take me into destruction. But let I rather stumble over the word and realize what happened. I cannot carry on in stupidity. I cannot carry on in the pride. I cannot carry on in, on in the greed or in, in the selfishness. I cannot carry on with that, Lord. Even if originally this word is like irritation and I stumble over it. And when after I stumble to say, God, forgive me. 
Let me learn. And the cornerstone, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone is what I receive from him. is like a cornerstone for a building. With the word, you will find strategy. Jesus, the cornerstone means from him, you will find strategy. From him, you will have the architect plans. From him, you will know how to build a house that will stand. From him as the cornerstone. And his principles are solid. It's solid. That architect plans that will start with him, it's solid. Let him be the cornerstone. In whatever initiative, whatever dream, whatever thing for your future, whatever relationship, start with him. Let him be the cornerstone. Amen. Last one. Precious stones. Revelation 21 and also 1 Corinthians 2. We will build in 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. We will build a life, my brother and my sister, with hoi and stroi and what's that? Good in English. All the, all the rubble and all the wood and all the straw and all those things. And it can be a wonderful house. And one day when we go to heaven, whenever the time will be, it will be burnt away as through fire, but you will be saved. You will be saved, but whatever you built on earth will be burned away. It will, there will be no legacy for the next generation. But if you build with precious stones, if you build with gold and precious stones, that will be forever, forever, forever. And even when he's describing in Revelation 21, heaven, with all these precious stones, all displaying the splendor and testifying of the splendor of God. May the precious stones in your life always display his splendor. Like the stones in heaven, not focusing on themselves as, wow, the stone. Yes, but in that it will display his splendor. Build a life with his precious stones. Amen? With his precious stones. And your life will display his splendor. Let's say, my life will display his splendor. As I build a life. With his precious stones. Thank you Lord. That you come in your grace. And just take us deeper. Take us higher. Take us into that place with you Lord. The way we will have the wisdom as wise builders. To build accurately with precious stones. With the gold coming from your heart Lord. We honor you for that. We thank you for that. God forgive us. For stones in our hands that we need to throw down where in religion we are able to destroy ourselves and others. With stones in our hands because of religion. Forgive us for that, Lord. We throw that down right now in Jesus' name. Help us to see if we have some stuff against ourselves and others, Lord. And that we need to throw down those stones. But help us to see. How to pick up the stones to prepare, not just for victory, but to prepare for the testimony. As we go into breakthrough, even though we are, uh, are not even through, we are not even yet there, but we are in the process of breaking through, Lord. Help us that right now, as we are going through the process of breaking through, that we will pick up the stones as we prepare for the testimony where we will honor you doesn't matter what thank you lord that you bring that stability in our lives i pray for that stability in every man every woman in this place and that so it will be for them in jesus name and in that name alone and all say amen, amen. let it be so in jesus name